Hello and welcome to this Autopipe Advanced Training on Modal Analysis Using Autopipe and Dynamic Introduction. This class starts the Dynamic Analysis Learning Path, where we will be focusing on different types of dynamic analyses. But it's important to understand the difference between static and dynamic loading and to go through this material before any other dynamic analysis training class. So let's talk about the difference between static and dynamic loading. A static load is a steady state, slowly applied load, and it doesn't vary with time, where a dynamic load varies quickly with time or frequency. In static loading, the piping system is in equilibrium, and the reaction loads have time to fully react to the applied loads, so the sum of the forces and moments is zero. In dynamic loading, the piping system is not in equilibrium, the pipe may or may not have time to fully react to the changing loads, and the sum of the forces and moments will not be zero. In static loading, the piping system remains at rest due to balance forces, so the support and anchor reactions are gonna be equal to the distribution of the applied static loads. Whereas in dynamic loading, the piping system has unbalanced forces and the system moves due to mass times acceleration. The support and anchor reactions might be higher or lower than the distribution of the applied dynamic loads. In simple terms, a static load can be considered as a dynamic load with a long duration, so the piping system can fully respond to it. Dynamic loading will tend to increase the response of the structure beyond the response obtained if the same load is applied statically. The response of the system depends not only on the magnitude of the applied force, but also the frequency or the timing of the load. In Autopipe, the dynamic analysis is performed according to the finite element analysis stiffness method using a lumped mass model. Some short duration dynamic loads can be considered with an equivalent static approach. However, in piping systems that are acted upon by time varying dynamic loads, the internal forces and moments are generally greater than those produced under the static application of the same magnitude load. So let us consider a beam between two supports with a weight. If we apply the weight slowly on the beam, the beam will deflect to a new static position and will be in equilibrium. But if we start again and we let the weight fall, the beam will deflect beyond the deflected static equilibrium position and will reflect above its unloaded position and will oscillate until it finally reaches the deflected static equilibrium position. So the deflection profile looks like this. And this amplification or the difference between the maximum dynamic and static displacement is often expressed as the dynamic load factor, the DLF and is defined as the maximum ratio of the dynamic deflection at any time to the deflection which would have resulted from the static application of the same load. The magnitude of the DLF will range between one and two, and it's dependent on the time history of the load and the natural frequency of the structure. And this is only true for instantaneously applied loads, so it's a maximum conservative value. In the ASME codes, there is a static equivalent approach that simulates dynamic events by taking the static load and multiplying it by the DLF. The dynamic equation of motion cannot be explicitly solved unless the damping term is zero and the imposed load is harmonic. Often the damping term is ignored to simplify the equation because its effect is small. So if we take the most basic of harmonic loads and we zero the equation, it can be solved and shown to be a function of the initial displacement and the natural angular frequency. The angular frequency is two pi times the cyclic frequency, which the program will determine. So the system characteristics of a single degree of freedom oscillator can be completely described by its natural frequency and its damping value. The free vibration response of any system with a specific number of degrees of freedom is the sum of that many independent cyclic functions known as modes of vibration and each one has its own natural frequency and a single degree of freedom. The advantage of this is that each mode is independent and responds to external loads in the same way that a single degree of freedom oscillator does. So the procedure for determining the dynamic response of a piping system, which Autopipe does, is to first determine the natural frequencies of all of the modes in the system, 
And the solution to the generalized eigenvalue problem is obtained by using the subspace iteration with progressive forward shifting technique. This procedure is an iterative process and it uses trial vectors to converge to an eigenvalue. And then the converged eigenvectors are used as initial trial vectors for the next eigenvalue. Then it determines the factor that each mode is multiplied by, which is a function of the magnitude of the imposed load, the DLF and the participation of that mode. It then multiplies the individual modal contributions and sums the individual contributions into the total system response. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.